Hey guys, my name is Sidney Yank and welcome back to another episode of Transport Fever 2 as we're building our very own transportation company in the United Kingdom. Finally, we have got somewhere. We struggled for the first couple of episodes, but we've got to the point right now where we're making really, really good cash. We managed to upgrade all of our lines, we've maximized all of our lines, and we've got a brand new train in our passenger route. Which is actually making big stonks. Just wait for this now, pull into London. Skadoodling down these tracks. You ready for this, boys? You ready for the cha-ching right now? Cha-ching! Nearly a million big ones coming in straight away, which is perfect. And this is what our network is currently looking like right now. We have our route from London to Birmingham, which is via Cambridge. We have an oil route. Which picks up the crude oil, turns into refined oil, takes it to then eventually be turned into fuel. But we're not delivering the fuel anywhere just yet. We have the farming area over here delivering the, 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 the grain down to the processing plant right there. And the food being delivered to London. So that's kind of slightly growing London a little bit. And we have our wood route going back and forth here. And they all seem to be making some sweet, sweet cash. Now I believe the only ones that are not really making cash or kind of struggle to make cash are our bus routes in the, in the city centre of Birmingham and London. I'm not too bothered about them at the moment. They're moving passengers for me, and that is the main thing. But for the first time ever, I've got an abundance of money. So much, in fact, that I'm ready to build more train lines. <laughs> so I'm really, really stuck and hell-bent on the fact that I want to expand the passenger train network before I implement a cargo train network. Because I want to get all the routes into all the towns and then eventually bring all the trains to them. That's the kind of the way that I kind of slightly want to do it. Now, I've got this idea where we're using Birmingham at the moment as a central hub. We've got the train line coming down into Cambridge, down into London, which will eventually connect all the way into Brighton. Because we're going to have a route from Canterbury to Brighton to Bournemouth, uh, Exeter, down to Plymouth. And every so often, we'll have this route here terminates in Brighton, which switches for this back and forth route there. But I also want to have a route that comes from Birmingham, using the train, same train stop here, into Oxford, into Reading, that then turns into Bournemouth. And then we use Exeter to turn off this way to go to Bristol, uh, and then so on and so on. We'll be also going north as well. In my head, I've got this passenger train network figured out. And I want to then use it to implement the cargo network too. So where normally, every time I play this game, I always focus on cargo and then build the passenger network after. I'm kind of like doing the opposite, which is one of the reasons why I'm slightly struggling. But I feel like with the limited space that I've got, I don't want to build cargo networks and then struggle to get passenger networks in. So, should be fun. So, oh, we've got some new vehicles now turning up as well. So, what I want to do right now, then, I should put it back into play mode. Because I'm making a little bit too much cash right now. Um, we're going to start a new train line from this same train station, which is going to come down into Oxford, into Reading, and I'll connect it up as a connection just there uh, to anticipate the big southern line that goes all the way through. So that should be pretty interesting. So we're just going to figure out then where we want the train stations in Oxford and in Reading. Now, we've got, I've already kind of looked at this before in a past episode, but we've got to take into account the topography. Um, so if I check right now, you can see there's a big edge just here. So it makes more sense to bring the train line into Reading up this way. Obviously makes the most sense. But we're starting to be able, and we can now get more powerful trains. So that means the trains, no matter what the kind of gradient is, we should be able to kind of um, tackle it uh, a lot easier than before. So I don't think the gradient's too much of a stress just yet. But who knows? Who knows? Now we're on a slight little bump here for Oxford. It's on a uh, slight little hill. So I'm thinking, where would it be best to kind of build this train line then? Now I've got, the, I could kind of connect these roads up there and do a diagonal train line. And I can also do a diagonal train line just here because I don't expect these cities to grow too big. I'm not expecting magic to happen. But I think it will be kind of cool to slightly get away from the gridded system with what's been going on in a lot of our cities. So let me build this parallel, this um, kind of diagonal triangle, whatever you, <laughs> whatever you want to call it right now. And we'll build a train uh, station for it as well. So it feels a very, very long time ago since I last built a train station. I'll actually pause just in case they start thinking about doing stuff here. And so that's going to go there. How much did it dig in, by the way? We can terraform it slightly to make it a little bit nicer and cleaner. And we'll go for two. I mean, ideally you want 
three. Well, I'll go two tracks. No, it's going to add the other one on there, isn't it? I'll go high speed. We'll keep it to one to begin with. And I've got the option of where to place it. What I could do, because we will need, we will need a bus route in here. So if I placed it, for example, here, and then we'll get a bus route to pick everybody up. So it shall be fairly easy. Or do I do it here? Now, if I did it there, how much does it dig into the ground? Do you know what? I don't think it digs in that much. So if I went across here, I might delete the diagonals now. <laughs> um, 240, do you reckon that's way too big? 160? I can always make the... Um, make them longer in the future but i don't really see that much traffic kind of coming in so we'll place it just there so what i'll do then i'll get rid of these roads that i built so it kind of keeps the city to its grid format but i think it might be red in where we have to kind of um play around slightly with a uh, a, a slight diagonal and that would come from something like this but even that could be a little bit tricky so if I went there and then in, mm, I, I don't know on this one. I truly don't know. I still reckon we should maybe bring this out to about there because it's going to come to there. I can make it kind of stop just here, but it also then means kind of deleting that house which you might have to say goodbye to it and then we just, we just gotta then figure out where we want this to go so if i bring that to there and then just kind of push this a little bit more forward have that connection just here delete you and then put our train station there whoops a daisy that would work. That would work perfectly fine. But it does slightly dig in a little bit to the ground. But that shouldn't be much of an issue. So we've got to try and get these connected up right now in a double line system. But I also want to take into account as well that we're going to need uh, bypassing lines and stuff like that. It's something that we haven't really implemented in many of these parts because at the end of the day we haven't really needed to just yet like the uh, cambridge one over here we haven't got any bypassing train tracks now for now to save me a little bit of money because we're not using any cargo i won't build them just yet we won't build them just yet but oh that's another point as well do i need to go high speed now the reason i say we don't need to go high speed is because one stops here to here how how they can't even get up to high speed so i don't think we need the high speed rail which is then going to save me money in maintenance i believe right, how can i um, upgrade these then have you got to delete them to be able to upgrade them slightly a bit annoying um so go with the uh the thing above it I get you all in and obviously we're gonna want um oh we oh it looks like we can eventually get some elevated stuff in so platforms so like i said it's all gonna be passenger just for now it's all gonna solely be passenger stuff just for now so let's configure you we have to get rid of these uh i, I should have thought about this when i added them in we don't need a high speed not until we do like longer sections where we can kind of get up to a little bit more speed but there's such short commuter routes, there's just no need for it. So we'll get these now connecting in. And again, our standard tracks, completely fine. We'll bring this out so far. Because we also want to try and go around the town, but also gives a lot of space. For if I have to add additional lines on for when we create more of the cargo routes. So if I bring this down to here, we'll mimic it on the opposite side. And then we'll get these connected. Now, hopefully the bends that then take place aren't too crazy. So that does dig in quite a bit, doesn't it? But it kind of keeps our gradient going. 
and I reckon that will work out fairly well. We'll smoothen it off as well, so it's not ridiculous. And then, I don't know if this is too short of a bend. Yeah, we'll delete it back by, by two, do you reckon, to get a nice swooping bend? I reckon that will work off fairly well. Bend it right round. Very good. Now, these are not end stations, so we de technically don't need to crisscross. We haven't crisscrossed over here, have we? No, we technically don't need to crisscross, but we've got those connections now in place. And then what we'll do is we'll run this going down. So where's the snap? The snap is here, but I need to make sure that we kind of give ourselves a bit of space. We've got our bypassing train track just there. So that's coming down to here. Oh snap! Hold on, it's creating a tunnel. I didn't need. I didn't want it to create a tunnel. Actually, what I'll do is I'll I'll create the connection down here. Now we've got the crisscross just happening here. So I reckon we come off just after the crisscross, because you never know where we're going to want, or if we're going to ever want to be able to bring in wood from that area into kind of other places so how back up how far back are we going i don't want to go too far but i reckon we go about there so that's the speed limit it's going to have which is fairly okay considering the bend that's taking place and then bring this out with it so we now just got to connect these up so bring you out to there as well now, I'll just see what the game intends for us to do. So, straight up and over these rolling hills. And if it can maintain its speed, it's a 75, which I think, personally, just, you know, it's fast enough for what we actually need it to do. So, do we need a connection coming from that way? Maybe, eventually, I don't know. We'll kind of see how time goes on. We'll kind of see how time goes on. But that line can terminate in Bournemouth from Birmingham to Bournemouth and then this line from Birmingham to Brighton it will terminate but obviously it goes through different cities on the way down here as well so let's quickly right now do some smoothening of the terrain um, is this smoothening no this is smoothening here we're gonna go up with the strength with the square just to slightly sort all of this out No way did I just spend 400,000 on doing all of that. Okay, we're going to forget about the smoothing for a minute. <laughs> uh, you kind of uh, you kind of get used to doing what you do in other games where you have like unlimited amounts of cash, money, moolah. And in games where you don't have much cash, money, moolah, you kind of forget your old habits. <laughs> oh, I love it. I absolutely love it. So in Reading and Oxford, we'll create bus routes that go around locally and collect people, take them to and from the station. The station's not on the outskirts of the city, but, you know, the, the cities will eventually grow further past them. And I think these will be perfectly fine, these train lines. So we do need to get, like, a bunch of signals and stuff in. We'll get that eventually in. But we also need to convert Birmingham uh, train station as well. Now, we're going to utilise this one. We will eventually have another train station over on this side. Which is what runs down into like Bristol, into Exeter, down into Plymouth, and serves, you know, the Wales area and then going up this side of north as well. Wow, Liverpool's got pretty big. That'd be another good city to kind of connect to. I feel like we might have to carve into it, but those big cities, we'll have, we have to spend some money in destroying some stuff to be able to get in there. So, we're now waiting then. We'll have a little fast forward to get some more money coming in. The trains arrive in London again. So, in it comes. I can't believe we managed to kind of switch everything out on this and upgrade everything. That'll pick a load of people up. There we go, which fills up. And there's now 142 people waiting for the train to come back again. But good stacks of cash. And like I said, we're going to have to now kind of convert Birmingham. Now, it would be good to have a second layer of tracks, right? And have a second platform on here. But it's a lot more difficult because, by the looks of it, I think the land drops off. And we also have to... 
Is it the land drops off or is it the t terrain in here? We'll find out now. No, I might need to delete these buildings. How much to delete a building? A hundred grand. Okay, let me pause. If I deleted you, I can get you in. Which means I can get you in. But then the space for the building to build back. Okay. Now eventually this will probably fill this whole gap. When I get bypassing lines. Because this is going to be also our main route. That goes up to Sheffield and Leeds up to the northern line. So there's going to be a lot going on here. There is going to be a lot going on. Now what I need to do is delete that for a second. And then we run this all the way up to here here now the way that this is situated is back and forth i'm going to assume we did the crisscross in london no we don't because we don't have two um tracks but for the first time ever we're gonna have to do a slight little crisscross here slight little crisscross so the train going back and to and from birmingham to london right now can switch between the two tracks which happens just there which i might well, no, it doesn't really make any difference. I was going to say, maybe I move that one over to this platform. And then the other spare platform will be the route that goes down into Oxford, Reading, and eventually terminate in Bournemouth. So what I've got to do now then is create this to eventually turn off here to go in that direction. Now, eventually this will be a big triangle where we can bring trains on that way down this way. You know, we'll come off there, goes into Bristol, which connects to the other line, goes to the side of Birmingham. We're going to have huge crissy crosses with uh, all these train lines to make a really, really good train network. I mean, the UK has got a really, really good train network. Most towns have a train station. Um, so it, this is kind of like what it would be like in real life. So what's the topography like here then? Is it crazy? Coming off. No, there's a big hilled mound just there. So we're going to bring this out just there to run up into there which shouldn't carve into it too much we will see we will see so if i kind of go from here and then let's just say i went directly to it what 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 does it do see that's not too bad it's not too bad i reckon we can deal with that we'll go to about there because it is going to be quite expensive and directly in so where's that one connecting to then so it's kind of just after it's just there the signal which we didn't have to kind of then adjust the signals accordingly all right place you in so because we then got this on here the signal for that there can't go there because if it stops there it's blocking this whole junction and at that point so we'll have a signal just here, and we'll have the signal just there instead. So we move it from there back to there, which gives us a fair amount of room. Uh, we'll do a signal here and here, and then I'll do one here and here, just to be you know on the safe side, an extra one as we kind of skadoodle out. So there and there, there and there. I mean, you can always place a signal right on the end of the train station but we're not going to have that many trains this is mainly going to be you know before uh, before when before the car before this is going to be for i feel like i'm saying before and after that kind of before this is going to be before the cargo trains this is going to be for cargo train why do, why can i why does that sound like it doesn't english very well <laughs> i don't know i'm having one of those moments I'm having one of those moments. So this is pretty good then. We're using the existing Birmingham line. So without me connecting the southern line up, if you want to go to London to Bournemouth, you can go all the way up to here, switch trains and go all the way back, <laughs> which is long, which is why that will eventually be connected to Brighton. And then you kind of go from London to Brighton down this way. But yeah, you get you get the idea of it. You get the idea. So that's pretty much all uh, set up there. we just got to do these signals down here. And then we've got to create the Bournemouth train station. So we should be able to afford it now. So here we got to sort out these signals as well. So these will be waiting. This one we've now got to delete because I don't want to crisscross anything going on. And signal wise, that will go here. So no train will go this way, then bend down. That's not how it's going to work. But we can now extend that. 
which is glorious. And this will be the, probably the most expensive station to build. Because we're making it tear through the center of Bournemouth here. So I reckon... I reckon we do something a little bit different here. We bring up the road. We have to put this in pause mode now as I slightly start to delete things. We'll go across like this in Bournemouth. I could do a bend to kind of slightly go with the area. So build that like that. So you still get the row of houses just there. I know it's quite close. We're going to have to delete this, but I won't delete it just yet because we'll build the train station. We'll build the train station here. Like that. And then the tracks themselves, now they connect from, which is a class as a bypassing route for our, our train line just here. And then that will kind of come into there and then we'll quickly sort out the double side of it. So I've just realized I've still got the high-speed railway tracks on these, which I don't need them. Uh, platforms. There we go. And because it is now technically an end route, we'll also sort this out here. And then any signals that need to take place. So we'll do a signal. Well, we'll do the signal just here before the crisscross. And now obviously we do one just there. So I reckon that's all we will kind of need. Not to cause too much chaos and, you know, hecticness. So that's what we do. We can't, I don't want to do fully square grid cities because that's not how it works in the UK. You have all this unique bendy stuff and tight corners and stuff like that. That's how, the, that's how it works in the UK. But that train line right now, it's pretty much good to go. I can add a train to it. Oh, this is exciting, boys. This is exciting. So back into play mode then because we're going to need a couple of million to be able to buy the train for that line. But if I create a new line anyway and go to Birmingham to Oxford, to Reading, to end in Bournemouth, to then go back between the two to end up in Birmingham again. I'll make this a... Let's change the colour of this. Let's go for like a red route. There we go. So it's on the opposite side. And then we're just going to make sure that it uses different train stations. So in Oxford here we use number one. In Reading will be the other one. So, as it goes into here, it switches, uses both sides of the tracks up this way. As it comes in, both sides. Over here, both sides. Which makes it use both sides here and then straight in there and leaves the other platform for the Birmingham to London routes. So, this is our Birmingham. Oh, hang on, hold on. Birmingham to Bournemouth. There we go. Birmingham to Bournemouth. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. But uh, like I said, we're going to need quite a few trains for this. Uh, not quite a few trains, sorry. Quite a few uh, cash money moolahs. To be able to buy the train. It's expensive. It truly is expensive. Now, I believe I got rid of my train depot uh, once upon a time to save me a little bit of money. Uh, I'm going to have to build the train depot again right now. So, train depot, which is in buildings. So, spin this right round. And then, just connect it up via the tracks. Very good. So, if I was to replicate the train we've got here, if I was to manage the vehicle and edit it, it looks to be a $9.6 million train. Yeah, good luck buying that. Now, I will say the only difference is right now, we're going from Birmingham to London on this route, which these are huge cities, so they have the quantity of passengers that need to be shifted, okay? 
We go into Oxford, Reading and Bournemouth, which is the quantity of passengers you get in Cambridge. Which is actually quite a lot when you look at it like there, but you got to remember the trains are pretty much 100% filled when they get to Cambridge because of how busy Birmingham and London are. So expect them to be a little bit less. Expect them to be a little bit less. And we are also going to have to sort out some bus routes as well. But this is, this is a good start. I'm liking how this is all going to spread. And obviously that's going to connect up down to there. I'm thinking as well, in London, as it passes over the water, doing another train station here. I mean, dear God, look at the sheer size of this. That's maybe where the elevated train line might come into play. Uh, just a way to kind of pick people up on both sides of the, of the water as it passes through down into Brighton. That might be a really, really good way of, uh, of going about doing it. So let's just get an idea for how much I'm going to need to buy this train. Now we can get diesel, but diesel, the cheapest one is 6 million. The cheapest steam is 1.6 million. So if I added that and then started to add the, the passenger carriages, um, we could go with these million dollar ones because they hold 17 a pop. And I could get one on board. <laughs> That's pretty much it. I'm poor again. I am poor. So, where's the train anyway? The train's just here. Wait, is it? Yeah. This is the train we're looking at right now. This is the one that makes the big bucks. Which is going to pay for this new train from Birmingham to Bournemouth. So, if I added a second one in, which is 3.6 million is what we need. 3.6 million is what we need. We should have close to that once this train here gets to London. And it means we can hold 34 people. Now, I could buy the train and sit on its way and just keep adding carriages to it as time goes on. There's nothing stopping me doing that. Where's the train doing the wood route here? That's also going to drop off as well and give us a few extra pennies. So I might just buy this small version of a train. And then just go move it from there. Oh, can I not afford it? Oh, I almost could have afforded it, but now I can't afford it. I don't want to take one off. I might have to wait for the train line to go back now. It's this, this is all like the last few episodes, me waiting for money. But the difference is, rather than waiting to make a profit, I'm just waiting for a couple of million. <laughs> it's kind of funny. It is kind of funny. So it might be a case of where we're waiting for the wood train to go back right now. Which that is now just picking up for the uh, for the next time again, and it's on its way. Um, that train has just got to Cambridge, so I feel like we're now waiting for the train to kind of uh, get to Birmingham. That's before I can then buy the next one. Well, that's that's fair enough, and we'll just add more to it because because to be honest with you, we don't know what the demand's going to be. It's not, I mean, it's going to Birmingham, which is a lot of people. But it's not ending in London. That's not where a lot of people go. But there is more cities on the line. So don't expect this, this train line to rival the money this train line makes. No way in this world. And I've got to bring all the, the vehicles and the buses in those other three cities to the train line to make it even viable. So yeah. Bit of a pain, but we will get there. We will get there. Right, that train's now getting into Birmingham, so we can now buy it. We should now be able to afford it. It should give us like four million. So hold on. Right, there we go. Four million in the bank. Three point six being spent on a brand new train with minimum capacity, and it's our Birmingham to Bournemouth route. Right, so that's now done. It's now in play. Problem is, the catchment area for our Oxford train station literally only covers there. So we're going to need to build a, a bus route that does a nice little loop and collects people and drops them off. So let's do that. This is all about making sure we maximize. Oh, I ain't got enough money to do stuff like this. Now I do. So bring that down to there. So this... Come to there. So 
So a little stuff like that allows me to just now go, go ahead and create said loop. And um, we don't need a double counterclockwise and clockwise route. We only need one. We are only going to need one. So a bus stop. We'll add it on this side. And then we'll add our next one. So we'll go here to kind of pick up everybody in the center. Oh, really? We've got no cash? Oh, deja vu. Right, that train's getting into London right now. The oh, that train's already tearing through as well. So we're always trying to see people uh, on there. We want to get these lines all set up first. So a stop there. We'll then go for a stop here. A stop here. And then a stop here. So some of them are quite close. But it's all about just trying to give us the maximum amount of coverage in the city itself. So I'm going to change it to an orange so you can see it. So just as the roads kind of continue to grow, it just gives us the maximum amount of coverage that we can potentially ask for. So we need a bus on that. Actually, let me quickly... I'm going to rename that, don't I? So we're going to call this... Oh. Metropoli uh, Metropolis. We, London's grown to 1,500. Let's go. <laughs> um, right, anyway, I got carried away right there. So this is our Oxford... Oh, I'm not even typing. It, it does help, Saniak, if you type. Our Oxford Loop. And how many vehicles do I throw on it? I have to buy the vehicles from over here. Uh, passenger. Oh, we've got many different variations now, don't we? So this one has the highest capacity. So we might go for this one. I might place in two. So I can't see there being that much demand for Oxford on the buses. So Oxford loop. Off you go. Now we've got to do the same thing for Reading. You see the catchment area for this. Even though there's already a fair few people waiting. Actually, let, let's check the train. Where's the train? Here. Is it making a profit? No. No. Is it even picking anybody up? Oh, it's already full. It's already full right now. <laughs> so it can't pick anybody else up until he gets to Birmingham. So let's kind of take a little, little look at it. So when it comes, we might need to add more carriages to it. Well, we're 100% going to have to add more carriages to it. 200,000. So in terms of finances... We need to carry more people to make this viable. We really do. So what I could do right now is quickly edit it to add an additional carry, John. Because we can afford that. Gives a capacity of 51. So that would be a big help. So in Oxford, there's... Oh, that's the bus. Train station. There's a couple of people there. Not many. People are now starting to wait at the actual bus stop. So we'll bring more people over. There's a few at Reading. And there's a fair few at Bournemouth as well. So it will make profit eventually, but it won't be huge amounts of money until we grow these little towns a bit more. But um, yeah, we actually finally got a place where we can deliver fuel to as well. Reading from over here. Nice. Nice. So did that make any cash? It would have made some cash just dropping some people off there. But anyway, we're getting sidetracked. We've got to sort Reading out. We've got to sort Reading. So, we need to build a little bit more and extend a little bit more of the road network. So, I reckon we're going to pause for a minute. Just delete this. Because we have a connection here that we can add on. We can run this to the very end. And I reckon we delete you. Delete you. And I've got the option to either run this into there. Yeah, do you know what? I'll do both. We'll do both. Um, bend. No. All right, bring that to there. Bend you in. Yeah. Okay, that will work. Uh, 
and we'll make this one like a dark ready purpley color that's weird but you know i was expecting them to go around that way but hey ho there you go so this is our red in loop um do you know i was watching this the other day this is just reminding me of something i was watching the other day on youtube uh, Americans pronouncing British town names uh, and you get all the usual ones come up but it, it reminded me that Reading's on there and a lot of Americans well the ones on the video thought it, thought it was reading <laughs> but yeah it's Reading very good very good and we'll buy two of the 11 capacity buses for Reading as well which is just down here which is there an issue Oh, there is an issue. I've done cargo stops. <laughs> you absolute noob, Seniac. You absolute noob. How did I manage that? How, honestly, how did I manage that? More importantly, how did I not notice? All right, there we go. All right, the line still works. We're all good. We're all good. We're all good. All right, now as time goes on. What's the finances like? Oh, we almost made a profit. Now, it should change when the buses get involved because it's bringing more and more passengers to the, the cities. But also, the city should start to grow slightly because now they've got outside connections. So, eventually, it should turn a profit. Now, the Bournemouth train station has a decent collection, but it's not a huge amount. So, it's a case of we're going to have to also implement some street connections now the fun in bournemouth is this is not a grid city so you're gonna get stuff a little bit different over here like i'm gonna go across to there and that's gonna bring itself in but we should get all the same effects I'm right, bringing you down, just to go across. Bringing you down, just so we can go across. So I'm going to try and create a loop this way. And is it possible to cross the train track? There's got to be a connection somewhere. Just there. Is that wise? Now the reason I'm doing it, because again, it just makes it a little bit easier to pick people up so by doing that we've got a radius around anyway so i just need a bus stop to come up it'll be one bus on this loop it would be one bus so making sure it's bus stops there we go we'll have a stop there we'll have a stop here stop here and then a stop here so there's nothing too much going on with this one It's just to make more people be able to connect into the greater network. So this is our Boron. Oh, Boron. Mouth loop. Our Boron mouth loop. And I don't have a vehicle connection down here. So we're going to have to actually build a vehicle depot. So road depot. I place down here and out of the way. And we're only going to throw one bus in it. I, I can't see there being much demand for for buses down here. Because it already connects to the majority of it anyway. So our Bournemouth loop. There we go. So hopefully we start to see more people now using this train line. So in terms of finances. Okay, we're now making more money than expenses. 
made some extra pennies there. And the capacity seems to be okay at the moment. So we'll let it do what it's got to do. This is great stuff already. This is perfect. This is absolutely perfect. So what I think we should do now then is take a look at some of our lines. And I think the bus routes in Birmingham and, and London... I think we no longer need the additional loops. We got a London loop, Birmingham 1 and 2. Or it could be a case of where we just need to kind of uh, upgrade the vehicles on the routes. So our London loop 2, if I manage the vehicles and select them all and go to... How many? There's eight. And go to replace. It costs nearly a million to replace them with these 11 capacity ones. But they currently got a couple of eight capacities. So that could do the job for us. Replacing those with them. And in our other London loop, which has got eight, do the same again. And see what difference that now makes in London. Is London still busy with traffic? Yes. Yes, it is. Do I bridge can, do I bridge another bridge? <laughs> Over. How much would it be? Let's find out. Oh, can I not, can I not do it there? Will they not let me? Is it too low down? It might be too low down there. But this is mainly to like people because they they're all coming from Canterbury right now. How does this look anyway before I do it? So he's going to end up deleting a building. One building if I can get away with it. And that's going to be 400,000. I want to bring it into this connection just here. So I want it to also maybe be used by some of these vehicles on the other side of London. But that kind of comes into there. Bring you in here. So if I swoop it like that, there might be something in this connection. Because that road then leads up to Ipswich. So if you're going from Canterbury to Ipswich via vehicle, easy peasy, mate. Easy peasy. There is a few vehicles using it right now. So that could work out. It might alleviate some of the traffic pressures. We shall see. We shall see. So in terms of balance right now, how are our London loops doing? This one's making good cash. The, you know what? They all kind of are making good cash, aren't they? They all kind of are. But it's, we can make the big cash with the cargo routes. So I was managing the vehicles here. We've got eight vehicles on this. And if I'm to replace these, we've currently got these ones which hold seven. I can now get actual specialized trucks almost. So seven all of a sudden to 13. Oh, these ones hold 11. These hold 13, the uh, tank trucks. Now, to replace all eight with these, it cost me 1.8 million. But I'm adding an additional six capacity onto every truck. Now, that's huge in the grand scheme of it. That, that's really big. So, where is it? These ones here. Can I, can I do it now with this next train coming in? Bam! Which my only problem, my only issue would be then, do we have enough cargo sitting here waiting for that type of truck? And how much does it now make? So in reality, it now when it drops off, it's making 17 grand. Is that right? 17? Yes. This one's got 13 now on board. 33. It's a huge change. It is a huge change. So manage these vehicles, and I want to do the same to these. Actually, we've got to wait for the train to go back now. It's a huge difference, isn't it? You just, just by upgrading the vehicle, how much more money you could potentially make. 
So if I was to replace all of these with the tanker trucks, I need 1.3. Is that the tanker truck? No, it's the tipper. Tank. Yeah, 1.3. So wait for this to head back. And then we'll do that one. Because that's, that's a nice chunk of cash, Mini Moolah, as well. Delivering the, uh, the refined oil. Over. <clears throat> oh, remember our northern power? I've literally just remembered our northern powerhouse. That would be a huge one to do it to. That would be a huge route to do it to. So money's about to come in right now. Only 800,000. So not quite the money that I need in question. Well, there's a train dropping off of the wood. The other train's going back to Birmingham right now. So it should help us out with some dollar bills. How much does this make now going back? Oh, we're actually so close to getting the money. That actually made quite a big chunk of cash. Right, is that enough now to do it? Yes. So replacing all those with tanker trucks. So this now makes, when it drops off, 24,000, okay? 24,000. So this is the first one here. It's going to fully load up on 13. So 24, 23, 24,000. It's got to be like 40,000, right? And they're a lot faster as well, so they'll be able to drive there quicker. Oh, look at the traffic in Birmingham right now. This is coming from like like Liverpool and like Shrewsbury. Uh, this is why we need to get train routes all set up to reduce our train traffic, uh, road traffic. Right, the vehicle's just over here, by the way. And I want to see how much this is now going to make. Here it comes. Beautiful. Beautiful. 46,000. That's huge. That's huge money right now. Huge. So our Birmingham crude oil is one of the most profitable routes at this point. That's the first one that I upgrade, upgraded. All because I changed the vehicles. Now, Northern oil is going to be a huge one, but I reckon I need about 2 million to be able to, you know, 2.5 million to be able to upgrade the Northern oil run. Because that drops off a lot more often, there's going to be huge amounts of money to be made in that. Huge amounts. Uh, I'm surprised our Bournemouth loop's making money. Which it is. Oxford loop. Making money. So it's all there. The money's out there, boys. So I probably should think about slowly start to re repaying my loan, don't I? Don't I? <laughs> yeah, I should start thinking about that soon. We'll eventually get to it. We'll eventually get to it. Right, we're taking chunks out of the amount of people now waiting. Right, that Birmingham to Bournemouth train, where is it now? Is it getting filled up? It looks like it start, it's starting to. It's making profit, but it's going to be limited by its own capacity at, some, uh, at this point now. Look at the amount of people waiting here that won't be able to get on the train. So while it makes a couple of pennies, it ain't going to make a huge dent at all. Because it can't really do much. I could try and add a second one onto it. Because the train in, in London's about to now arrive, which it has. So extra carriage now on board, it can now hold 68, from 51 to 68. So I'll be able to pick up a few people up here. There we go, all now filled up. So everybody wants to go, you, we make our money going back to Birmingham, that's where we make our money. Uh, but then again, there's a fair amount of people waiting to go to Bournemouth. So the sooner I can get an additional carriage on this, the better. Will it make four hundred? Oh no, I was about to say, will it make enough money to kind of uh, be able to buy a second one? But I doubt it. No, we came close, but nope, there we go. 
Will he get to 85? Yes! That's got an 85 capacity. What's the other train got? 136. Right, we should, we should start to see some big stonks being made from that train line now as well. Don't you just love it when, it, when you can just feel it all slowly coming together? You just gotta love it when you can slowly feel it all coming together. So yeah, it's gonna be empty going this way because everybody's wanting to go to Birmingham. <laughs> See you guys, because Birmingham's so good. Yeah, best city in the world, right? Best city in the world, baby. Now, has this bridge made any impact? I'd argue no. I would argue no. But it is beneficial to some anyway. So every vehicle that uses it is one less vehicle going down here. So it is semi-beneficial to some of them. So you got to give him that. You got to give him that. Right. Trains departing from Birmingham on the way to London. We've got the train over here right now. Makes way down to Bournemouth. And it's, it should be making the most money it's ever made so far as well. Very good, very good, very good. So this route right now, how many vehicles are on this? There is a total of eight vehicles. So we know we're going to need... We know we're going to need 1.8 million about that. To replace those vehicles with the new one. But I've got to wait for the train to get to London. Which is now on its way. So we can begin the process of now doing it. So this is carrying grain. So a, a truck that carries grain, this one 13. Yeah, we need 1.8 million to be able to switch all these vehicles out. Which is huge. The money difference we make is, is ridiculous. We've seen it on the oil routes. Right, train to London incoming. Wow, we missed out. We missed out. What happened there? Boom. Done it. Nailed it. So, in reality... A vehicle dropping off the grain right now, which contained... Seven makes 24 big ones, okay? 24 big ones. This one, which now contains 13. Now, it's quite a longer distance compared to the oil one, so we, we do make more money in general. How much do we make from this with 13 now on board? We're almost doubling what we're making, so that's got to be like 45, uh, you know, thousand, right? Easily got to be 45,000. Forty-four. I was close. <laughs> I was a couple of hundred dollar bills off. Very close. So then we'll need to upgrade these ones as well. Going to London. We got both trains on the way to London, uh, Birmingham. So let's get them ready. Now we need to carry food. Which ah, oh, I don't have a, a good one to carry food. It's got to be this one. It carries eleven, which is still four more than each of the others. So, we got to wait for the second train to get into Birmingham right now. Which, believe it or not, it now technically has to wait until that one's departed. So, that one's now going to come in. And then we'll upgrade all of these vehicles. Bam. And they're the ones that carry the food to London. Problem with these guys is they get stuck in a lot of traffic because of what's going on. So there's not really a fat light we can kind of do about that at the moment. And there's not a fat lot. Maybe eventually we have to start upgrading some of the roads. If I upgraded that for speed, do they all start to use that a little bit more? We might see a little bit more movement on that one.
I mean, it deletes the brick. Oh, oh. But they already use that, don't they? They already use that. I don't know. I don't want to mess around with it too much because I'll cause absolute gridlock if I do. But I think we'll end it here, guys. I think we've done astronomically amazing right now. Um, the train line, Birmingham to Bournemouth right now. You can see the amount of money it's now starting to make, which is really, really good to see. Our money in general, I mean, forget the fact that I'm spending millions every year. Forget that, okay? That's out the window. Forget it. Skadoodle it out your brain. Um, but the income we've got right now, we're doing like, two, we did two million that year. You know, it, it's it's slowly happening for us. It's slowly happening for us. And our only really expenses, because the investments is what we spend, is a hundred grand from our um, our loan. So we will start thinking about paying this back. We'll do that in the next coming episodes. Just to get rid of our bank loan. So we can get an extra hundred grand a year back to us. But... Yeah, having a second train line is a big thing right now. Upgrading the vehicle so they can carry more makes them more money as well. Uh, and we also need to upgrade our northern line. We can't forget about the northern line. We've got to upgrade that. But I think next episode then, we're going to try and build our southern train line as well. Get all that hooked up. Now, they're all in prime position that we will be eventually start ready to start feeding the cities. There will be a switch at some point where I, I stop looking at the passenger and then go ahead and start looking at the cargo. I just want to get the lines in for passenger. And then we'll kind of allow the cargo to utilize some of those lines. And take shortcuts and all that kind of jazz. But again, we've got to build our train network before we can do it. It's looking good so far. I'm excited to see where this is going to go. But until next time, I'll see you all soon. So goodbye.